Tonight on Newswatch, Sebelius steps down. More on the resignation of the woman behind the botched health care rollout. Plus, managing the Internet, why some conservatives are pushing the Obama administration to maintain control over the web. And how an underground coffee project is helping set folks free from a life of sin and crime. All this and more tonight on Newswatch. Good evening. I'm Mark Martin. And I'm Wendy Griffith. Well, nearly two weeks after the official enrollment deadline of the Affordable Care Act, Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius is stepping down. President Obama praised her work today in the Rose Garden ceremony where he nominated her successor. There are seven and a half million people across the country that have the security of health insurance, most of them for the very first time, and that's because of the woman standing next to me here today. Taking over at HHS will be Sylvia Matthews Burwell, currently the president's budget director. The new position is pending Senate confirmation. Sebelius is often credited with the botched rollout of Obamacare. Now with her resignation, Republicans are issuing fresh calls to repeal the measure. They say while Sebelius may be leaving, the problems with the law are still here. Caitlin Burke has that story. The Obama administration, hoping a new face in charge of health and human services, will signify a fresh start for Obamacare. The website has never crashed. Uh, it is functional, but at a very slow speed and very low reliability. Sebelius's term at HHS was plagued by the disastrous rollout of the health care law, including the crippling glitches on healthcare.gov that persisted up to the final enrollment deadline on March 31st. We do not have any reliable data around enrollment, which is why we haven't given it right. to date. She also bore responsibility for the contraception mandate that forces religious business owners and groups to provide drugs that may induce abortion. Ultimately, it is the federal government telling people of faith to violate their religious beliefs, and if you don't, you're going to suffer fines and penalties. Still, Republicans say it's not Sebelius that's flawed, but rather the health care law she defended. They say that even after she's gone, it will continue to fall short. The Obama administration is fighting critics by touting new enrollment numbers. They say 7.5 million people signed up by the March 31st deadline, exceeding expectations. But two new reports cast doubts on the rosy Obamacare numbers. The Fiscal Times cites studies by the Rand Corporation and Express Scripts. They show only 3.9 million people actually enrolled in insurance plans, a number that falls far below even the lowest enrollment expectations. And those who did enroll don't provide the support needed to prevent increases in premiums or deductibles. Express Scripts found that the incoming enrollees actually require more medical attention than previous risk pools. Signs that huge challenges still remain for Obamacare. All problems waiting for the new Health and Human Services Secretary. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. David Christensen is with the Family Research Council and joins us now from our Washington Bureau. David, what does Sebelius' exit mean for the Obama administration? Well, I think Secretary Sebelius has been an advocate of uh, President Obama's uh, very liberal agenda with health care, uh, from the HHS mandate that violates religious freedoms of Americans, uh, threatens their jobs, as well as abortion funding, higher premiums and costs. Um, I think they wanted to try to change uh, the face of uh, Obamacare and the, the mismanagement uh, before it gets too close to the election, quite frankly. Well, according to the administration, the Health Care Act is finally seeing some success. So, you know, why the resignation now? Well, it assumed that uh, they do have 7.5 actual uh, enrolled uh, uh, Americans in, in health care. We know that HHS and Secretary Sebelius does not know how many of those Americans were people who lost uh, health care coverage. Uh, about 5 million are estimated to have lost health care coverage directly because of Obamacare. So they don't actually know how many of these enrollees are new. We also know that they don't know uh, how many of these uh, Americans who have enrolled have actually paid. So, uh, you know, I just talked to a small business owner today from South Carolina who uh, runs uh, a, a small business that handles medical billing. And they said it's been an absolute disaster. The doctors aren't getting paid. The insurance companies can't estimate how much it's going to cost them. Uh, it's really been a major problem. Americans uh, 
frankly, a lot of Americans had health insurance that they liked. They've lost their insurance. Uh, so this has not mm -hmm. been something that works. Uh, and frankly, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Well, I wanted to ask no. you about Sylvia Matthews Burwell. You know, I was telling right. Mark, my co-anchor, I said, that name sounds familiar. We just Googled her real quick, and she's from West Virginia. And I think we both went to WVU at the same time. What do you know about her? We don't know a lot about her. She's the director of the Office of Management and Budget, which is a, a big uh, agency that oversees a lot of the government's budgeting. So she's clearly a manager. Uh, clearly, they wanted to get somebody in there who maybe does a better job of managing uh, Obamacare's implementation than uh, Secretary Sebelius. Um, but this is not just simply uh, hiring a bureaucrat and doing a better job at uh, you know, management practices. This is fundamental flaws with Obamacare itself. Uh, when the government is trying to dictate to uh, doctors and insurance companies what they have to cover, how much it has to cost. And, you know, uh, I heard in your piece earlier the, the whole issue of forcing, uh, you know, charities and, and groups like the Little Sisters of the Poor to violate their conscience on abortion-related uh, drugs, um, Hobby Lobby and Conestoga Wood, uh, this has really been a major problem. Uh, we know that congressional uh, members have asked questions of HHS repeatedly. Does Obamacare plans in the exchanges cover elective abortion. There's an abortion surcharge that's in the law. We know about that. And, the, and Secretary Sebelius actually had refused to answer those questions. Mm. So this idea of transparency and management is a fundamental problem. And uh, I don't know that, uh, frankly, a, a new person running HHS is, is going to solve the problem. Uh, right. I know a lot right. of Thanks, members David. have to ask questions coming up. Yes. Well, we'll find out, won't we? David, thanks so much for your insights. Mark? Thank you. And even with the troubled rollout of the president's health care plan, the administration is claiming success. But many experts say the true measure of success will come with future elections. Obamacare is expected to play a big role in this year's midterm elections, as well as the 2016 presidential vote. A recent Wall Street Journal NBC News poll finds 70 percent of Republicans say they'll more likely vote for a candidate who pledges to repeal the health care law. Seventy seven percent of Democrats say they'll vote for someone who pledges to keep the measure in place and work to make it better. Republicans in Congress are pushing the Obama administration to slow down its plan to give up some of its control of the World Wide Web. Critics say the move could be bad for free speech and even business. Jennifer Wishon has that story from Washington. America has always been the main player in managing the World Wide Web. Even conservatives who typically want to limit the role of government say it's an example of Washington doing something well. It's a very relaxed control, which is why I think we've seen the Internet grow to be a, an incredible voice of freedom, not just in the United States, but around the world. In the late 90s, the Commerce Department formed a nonprofit agency called the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, or ICANN, which governs the system that assigns website addresses and directs Internet traffic. We're talking about every email, every time that you search something yep. on Google. I mean, we're talking about every transaction. Sure, every transaction. But following Edward Snowden's revelations about America's spying activities, the Obama administration is feeling international pressure to give away the authority to direct web traffic. Even the head of ICANN says everyone with an interest in the Internet deserves a voice in the management of it as equal partners. But the big question is, if the Internet isn't in U.S. hands, whose hands do we trust? China and Russia are waiting in the wings to fill the vacuum if the U.S. cedes control. And there's a great fear that the Internet will eventually wind up under the control of a U.N. organization called the International Telecommunications Union. It's controlled by bad actors. In fact, they, they, they've now uh, passed a, a, already a resolution through that will allow governments to shut off websites. Um, and uh, and that, that won't be a violation of human rights. Indeed, many critics worry if another country or countries take over managing the the web, it could lead to the suppression of free speech and political dissent, possibly even hurting international business over the web. Congress is considering two actions. One delays the transfer of control. Another requires congressional approval before the Obama administration can act. And there's bipartisan concern. Even former President Bill Clinton thinks the administration's plans are a bad idea. A lot of people who've been trying to take this authority away from the United States wanted to do it for the sole purpose of cracking down 
on internet freedom and limiting it and having governments protect their backsides instead of empower their people. Many Americans are also concerned. Nearly 120,000 people have signed this petition to keep the control of the internet in the land of the free. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, Washington. Arizona abortion clinics will now face surprise inspections. Lawmakers passed a bill this week removing the warrant requirement law and for so-called SNAP inspections of clinics. The law passed mostly along party lines. Most Republicans believe it protects the lives of women and children, while most Democrats say it hurts women's health and access to abortion. The bill goes to Arizona's governor for final approval. Pro-abortion groups plan on contesting it in court if it becomes law. Former Arkansas governor and presidential candidate Mike Huckabee is warning conservative lawmakers not to back away from social issues. Huckabee says if winning new voters means the GOP compromises on issues evangelicals care about, the party might just lose some of its base. It leaves them at home. They just don't go vote, which they didn't do very uh, strongly in 2012. Uh, there were fewer evangelical voters who voted for Romney than voted for McCain. So this notion that don't mention those issues because, you know, you might offend uh, the voters who are leaning left, you better worry about are you going to leave at home, cool off and completely chill out the voters who just will say, well, I have really no one to carry the issues that matter to me. And for more of David's interview with Mike Huckabee, you can visit his blog, The Brody File. You'll find that at our website, cbnnews.com. NATO is urging Russia to pull back its troops from Ukraine's border. New NATO satellite pictures reveal an estimated 40,000 Russian troops gathered there. The images taken between March 22nd and April 2nd show tanks, armored vehicles, artillery, and aircraft parked and ready for action at a series of makeshift staging posts. NATO Secretary General says if Russia is serious about opening a dialogue, those troops need to go. Coming up, death sentences for a Christian couple convicted of blaspheming Mohammed. We'll show you where. I have a son who's extremely smart and sensitive. He went to heaven. I came back. One true story has become a worldwide sensation. You saw heaven? It's beautiful. This Easter, Heaven is for Real is a profoundly beautiful movie. They don't believe me, do they? Some people might be afraid to believe that will help many to believe. Is heaven a hope or as real as the earth and sky? A perfect family film. Heaven is for real. Rated PG. I was having some pains between my shoulder blades. At that point, everything changed. Diagnosis, pancreatic cancer. First there was prayer. The second is to fight. As soon as we walked through those doors at Cancer Treatment Centers of America, all my anxiety left. The pastoral care here is based on the Bible, based on the Word of God, just as it is at our own church. When you combine the great medicine with the spiritual resources we have, it provides the patients with something that really can make a difference. You got a pastor right there on staff praying with patients, and whether it be scripture or whether it just be a word of encouragement to say God's got this. If you or someone you love is fighting complex or advanced stage cancer, go to cancercenter.com forward slash faith. You'll learn how our treatment results compare to national averages and see a list of insurance plans with which we've worked. Advanced medicine and technology, the warm embrace of the spirit. I firmly believe God led me here. Call or go to cancercenter.com. Cancer Treatment Centers of America. Care that never quits. Appointments available now. I have a son who's extremely smart and sensitive. He went to heaven. I came back. One true story has become a worldwide sensation. You saw heaven? It's beautiful. This Easter, Heaven is for Real is a profoundly beautiful movie. They don't believe me, do they? Some people might be afraid to believe. That will help many to believe. Is heaven a hope or as real as the earth and sky? A perfect family film. Heaven is for Real. Rated PG. Welcome back. Syria has until June 30th to eliminate its chemical weapons program. According to the world's chemical weapons watchdog, the country still has a chance at meeting the deadline, but only if it can remove all of its ingredients for making poison gas and nerve agent by the end of the month. President Bashar Assad has already missed several key deadlines, citing unrest in his country for delivery delays. A weapons destroyer is ready to start working to eliminate Syria's stockpile as early as May. 
A judge in Pakistan has sentenced a Christian couple to death on false charges of blasphemy. The judge ordered their execution after convicting them for sending a text message critical of the Prophet Muhammad. Gary Lane has details. Scenes like these have become all too familiar in Pakistan. Militant Muslims go on a rampage, ready to beat and kill anyone simply accused of blasphemy against their holy book, faith, or prophet. Such was the response last July, when an imam in the city of Gojra accused Christian Shafkat Emanuel and his wife Shagufta of texting him a blasphemous message against Muhammad. Police arrested and jailed the couple. Keith Davies of the group Rescue Christians says the allegations against the two are bogus. The wife uh, cannot write, she's illiterate. The husband is a cripple from his waist down, can't move. Um, they had a cell phone that they lost and they reported it missing to the, to the owner of the store. The store uh, manager testified in court that it was reported stolen and was reported missing to him. Despite a lack of evidence, Shafkat and his wife were sentenced to death. Davies says Muslim extremists either bribed or intimidated both the prosecutor and judge assigned to the case. We had, had people who had private meetings with the judge uh, who said that, you crazy, I, I have to convict, I have to sentence to death because otherwise I'll be killed. Sir, like Davies, Jeff, Jeff King, president us. of International Christian Concern, Concern believes the Christian couple will eventually be released. Now the, the couple will sit in prison for the next five to six years until it reaches a high court. They're often released then if they're not killed in prison, though. And in, in the meantime, what happens with their kids? Have they been without their parents? I, have they even been able to see the parents? No, they cannot see the parents because, uh, because they're also threatened with death because the extremists there want to kill the whole family. And, and the grandfather is not a young man. I'm sure he's concerned about his health and the longevity uh, of his ability to care for these uh, children. Yes, he's 86 years old. So uh, he can't, he, he's not in a, in a position to, to uh, provide aid and, and, uh, and, and to bring these children up. Um, but our organization has the ability to help these children. Pakistani Christians Shafkat and Shagufta are not alone. Others like Asya Bibi still waste away in prison, also accused of blasphemy, also sentenced to death. Cases like this and some others make a lot of, of noise and they get some attention. But the tragedy is there's so many more and they're sitting quietly, no one knows about them. What can be done? Both King and Davies say the U.S. government gives millions of dollars each year to Pakistan. And with that money comes political leverage to gain the release of those like Shafkat and Shagufta. Our goal is to secure their release and uh, we're going to put as much pressure as we possibly can to try and do that. We all know to pray, but at the same time we've got to get on the phone with our legislators and say what is going on. Without political pressure, strong political pressure, from the United States, it's not going to happen. Gary Lane, CBN News. To see more of these interviews with Keith Davies and Jeff King, log on to Gary Lane's blog, The Global Lane, CBNnews.com. Up next, how one ministry is using coffee beans to help transform lives. Announcing an important breakthrough in healthcare that can benefit everyone. If you or anyone you love needs affordable health insurance, regardless of a pre-existing medical condition, call Quick Insurance 123 today and get the immediate relief you deserve. Quick Insurance 123 was created to provide affordable health insurance to all uninsured Americans, with or without pre-existing conditions. This is not a discount card. This is a real insurance program that lets you choose from many affordable health plans with access to doctors, hospitals, emergency services, and more. So call the number on your screen now and get the health coverage you need just for calling. As a special bonus, we'll send you a free prescription savings card that could save you up to 85% on your prescriptions. That's right, you could save up to 85% on your prescriptions just for calling. Call Quick Insurance 123 to find out how you can get affordable health insurance and receive your free prescription savings card just for calling. Don't wait. Getting a free quote is as easy as one, two, three. Call today. Attention sleep apnea patients. Are you tired of the expense and hassle of getting your CPAP and BiPAP supplies? Are you fed up with dealing with ill-fitting, leaking, or worn out masks and straps? Are you worried about the effects that unsanitary tubes, cushions, and filters have on your health? 
If you said yes to any of these questions, Allied Medical Supply Network has the solution to your problems. You could qualify to have your supplies regularly delivered right to your door at little or no cost to you. That's right, no more inconvenience, no worn out masks and straps, no more unsanitary equipment, just restful sleep. Call Allied Medical Supply Network today to determine if you may qualify to receive your fresh, brand name supplies at little or no cost. Don't delay. Call us now to see if you are eligible to save money on regular delivery of your CPAP and BiPAP supplies. Call 1-800-815-9947. That's 1-800-815-9947. Or go to CPAPSupplyHelpline.com. Millions of Americans get caught up in drug addiction and the cycle of crime, and those who get sucked in often get stuck there. Yeah, prisons have a poor record of helping these people break free, but as Caitlin Burke reports in tonight's Focus Story, one ministry is seeking some remarkable success because of coffee. It's morning in the Skagit Valley small town of Burlington. And in the basement of this 100-year-old bank building, the underground coffee project begins another day's work. These men come from a different kind of underground. Gangs, prison, drug addiction. Well, I was a heroin addict and a meth cook and a meth addict and a cocaine addict. And I used all of those on a daily basis. And so for 17 years, uh, I was in agreement with evil. At Underground Coffee, it's about more than just roasting the coffee beans. There's a profound message for the men and how the beans get from this to this. These cold, hard, ugly beans come into the roaster, the heat changes them and changes their character, changes their appearance, changes their aroma and their flavor. And that's exactly what happened with Zach. In time, the fire of the Holy Spirit cracked his shell, transforming this once violent, angry man into a humble servant of God. What is your purpose in life now? Um, to share good news with people who are suffering and to suffer well with others. Like Jesus would go into people's suffering with them and, and even when they're guilty and full of sin, that didn't separate him from them. The Underground Coffee Project is part of Tierra Nueva, a ministry with a heart for people on the margins. And it all began with the beans. Honduras, 1981. Newlyweds Bob and Gracie Ekblad were deeply moved by the poverty there. Most of the people there attributed their poverty to God's will. When we began discipling them in farming practices, and they began to have the same results we did, then suddenly God was sort of off the hook in a sense. And that opened the way for us to talk about God differently. But it became clear the last thing those Honduran peasants wanted was a sermon. In Spanish, a sermon is the same as uh, a scolding. Most of the people that we work with assume that uh, church is really a, a place where you go um, to be reminded of all the things you're not doing. Bob explains in his book, Reading the Bible with the Damned, how he helped them discover for themselves the truth of God's unconditional love. In time, Tierra Nueva, or New Earth, was born. In 1994, Bob and Gracie moved back to Washington. As the county jail's new chaplain, Bob met Julio. Trying to get help before, and it's like, I've always got turned down because of my criminal background and because I was an uh, active gang member. But Bob never looked at me like that. Tierra Nueva always accepted me with open arms. They told me Jesus loved me no matter what. But Julio's shell was especially hard to crack, due in part to his gang ties and hardcore drug addiction. For 18 years, he was in and out of jail. Finally, he had nowhere else to turn. A bounty had been put on his head. Julio was on the run. I was praying and I was asking God, if you could get me out of this one, and I'll, I'll surrender to you. And the first thing that came into my mind was Pastor Robert and Tierra Nueva. He immediately got on a bus and headed back to the Skagit Valley. We baptized him five days after he came. We just watched him grow um, into an amazing sort of man of God. And so I guess I really believe in the importance of Pierce's perseverance. I didn't feel I was worthy of God's love from all the bad things that I had done in my past. Like, well, how could God want to use me? And I just kept remembering that Pastor Robert said, remember Paul? He was a crucifier of Christians and Jesus used him 
to, to help people and to reach out to the people. Tierra Nueva strips away the layers of religion, showing what Jesus' ministry was really like. In humility and unconditional love, they bear witness as modern-day Sauls are transformed into the image of Christ. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, Skagit County, Washington. Love Conquers All. Well, up next, how students from one high school helped a classmate have the night of her life. Announcing an important breakthrough in healthcare that can benefit everyone. If you or anyone you love needs affordable health insurance, regardless of a pre-existing medical condition, call Quick Insurance 123 today and get the immediate relief you deserve. Quick Insurance 123 was created to provide affordable health insurance to all uninsured Americans, with or without pre-existing conditions. This is not a discount card. This is a real insurance program that lets you choose from many affordable health plans with access to doctors, hospitals, emergency services, and more. So call the number on your screen now and get the health coverage you need just for calling. As a special bonus, we'll send you a free prescription savings card that could save you up to 85% on your prescriptions. That's right, you could save up to 85% on your prescriptions just for calling. Call Quick Insurance 123 to find out how you can get affordable health insurance and receive your free prescription savings card just for calling. Don't wait. Getting a free quote is as easy as one, two, three. Call today. Attention sleep apnea patients. Are you tired of the expense and hassle of getting your CPAP and BiPAP supplies? Are you fed up with dealing with ill-fitting, leaking, or worn out masks and straps? Are you worried about the effects that unsanitary tubes, cushions, and filters have on your health? If you said yes to any of these questions, Allied Medical Supply Network has the solution to your problems. You could qualify to have your supplies regularly delivered right to your door at little or no cost to you. That's right, no more inconvenience, no worn out masks and straps, no more unsanitary equipment, just restful sleep. Call Allied Medical Supply Network today to determine if you may qualify to receive your fresh, brand name supplies at little or no cost. Don't delay. Call us now to see if you are eligible to save money on regular delivery of your CPAP and BiPAP supplies. Call 1-800-815-9947. That's 1-800-815-9947. Or go to CPAPSupplyHelpline.com. Prom night is often something high schoolers look forward to for years. Indeed. I recall all of mine. I went to several. <laughs> well, that's why some students at a Texas school surprised a very deserving classmate. 15-year-old Kennedy Brown has been battling brain cancer for the last couple of years. Her condition is getting worse, so her best friends put together a plan to give her a prom night she'd never forget. We realized we, we need to do this for her so she can get this experience that we're all going to get. I serenaded her. I, I wrote the song and I sang it to her, asking her, asking her out to prom. It was nice to see her smile after all she had been through. Wow. Students dressed up and danced and awarded Kennedy the title of prom queen. They even held a special graduation ceremony mm -hmm. where the principal gave Kennedy, Kennedy an honorary degree. What great friends. I know, that's what I was that thinking. What precious. great friends. I'll tell you, you got what. got to experience prom. Yes, and we pray that the Lord heals Kennedy, that's for Amen. sure. Amen. Mm -hmm. We pray for a miracle. Thanks for watching, everyone. You yeah, have a great weekend. <laughs>